Hey folks, got another update for you, playing some great battles of the American Civil War, Twin Peaks box. I just started this battle, this is just a test game, it's not actually a scenario from the, the, from the box, from the game. Uh, I'm just setting up a couple divisions, uh, one core against one core basically. Two divisions aside, going against each other in some, you know, made up little fictional engagement in my own head. Just to test out the rules for activation and movement and combat. And right now I've been, in the first turn, I'm focused on the movement uh, and the activations. And I'm about to get into the shooting combat. And we're going to see that over here on this flank, as well as down here. If you could see that some of these units in range of that... Union flank. They're going to try and drive them back. Uh, yeah, so this is the test. So far, I'm loving this game. It's a it's a chit pull system for activation of divisions, and I like it. It works pretty good. Um, you pull out these little chits. They're called activation markers, and each division gets so many of them put in this little cup, depending on the efficiency of each core commander. Uh, which is determined every turn and it's a value it's typically from one to four uh, depending on how many counters are in the mix and so on and so forth uh, I believe for this first turn uh, everybody's got three AM markers so they can act their divisions can activate three times each and there's two divisions for the rebels two for the Union and each one activates three times and that's all based on various things like the efficiency rating, which again was a counter pull. Uh, the Union Corps commander pulled a two, and so did the Corps commander for the Rebels, which is Jackson. He also pulled a two. And that value basically determines how many activations each division on their side can do. It's two in this case. But that value is modified. Uh, for instance, it can be modified by the overall commander, which there isn't any in this little engagement. We just have the core commanders as the highest level of command in this scenario. But it can also be modified by the divisional commander. If he's, you know, he would have a, an efficiency modifier. And that value of two, in the case of Jackson, would get a plus one in dependent on the divisional commander. Like this divisional commander has a modifier, this is Hill, of plus one. So he actually has three activations for the turn, and so on and so forth. There's other little modifiers that apply to it, but so far in the first turn, each division here, and again, there's two for the Union and two divisions for the Rebels, has uh, three uh, AM markers, activation markers. They can activate three times in this turn, and each of those markers, AM markers, again, three for each division, are put in a cup. And randomly, you pull one out and activate that division to take an action with, or take to activate. And that division does stuff. And then you keep repeating that until all the AM markers have been pulled. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, I will say that this, uh, I did have a situation here. This division, Augur's division, for the Union, he's got the left flank. All these purple uh, guys over here. Uh, one of his brigades was out of command uh, for one, but also, what else happened here? Uh, no, he was at two, uh, because that's what he pulled to. There was no modifiers. Divisional commander did couldn't modify that, so he only has two AMs for this division. But this one has three, like the rebels, and mainly because the corps commander has a plus one, uh, so he can modify this efficiency value of two to a three for up to one division uh, in his core. And he did that. He gave this division, which is William's division, that's the divisional commander, he gave him a plus one. So when Williams, Williams actually has two AM markers plus one. So he has three. Uh, unfortunately, over here, Augers is still only two. So he has two AM markers, he has three. So he'll be this this division will be able to do more. The yellow guys, uh, the rebels, on the other hand, they all have three. Again, they pulled a two efficiency marker, but AP Hill, their divisional commander, has a plus one divisional um, 
he has a modifier to that, so his two becomes three. Uh, in addition, because Jackson is also, he's the core commander, he also has a plus one uh, efficiency modifier, same as Banks. He could pick a division as well to gain a bonus uh, AM marker, and I believe he chose Hill, or did he choose Yule? I think he chose Yule. So Yule's uh, became two to three, and Hill's became two to three because of his divisional modifier. So three, 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 and two. And on top of that, this brigade in Augur's division was out of command. He was out of command of his divisional commander. Uh, which means this brigade specifically will take one less uh, activation. Now they have two for the turn, so he's only going to have one basically, which is the minimum. You always get at least one. And he already took his activation. He moved forward from this wood line, so he's done. And by the way, all these divisions, um, brigades and so on, they're under advance orders. So... There's specific orders the brigades can be under. They could be under advance, they could be under march, and they could be under attack. And attack orders lets uh, the units actually get into adjacency to enemy units and actually get into shock combat and do other things. Advance, you can't get adjacent unless it's enemy artillery. You can move adjacent to them, and that's about it. And there's some other restrictions, stacking restrictions and so on and so forth. Uh, very cool game. I'm really enjoying it. I'm about to go into... Hill just pulled his AM marker next. And he just took an activation uh, previously. Move these guys up. Uh, he's got uh, Thomas's brigade trying to drive uh, Crawford's brigade back from this little position he's taking up by this hill. So he's taking cover in the cornfields. He's going to try and drive that flank back and uh, get into a position where he could bring up the rest of his brigades. Uh, so that's his goal here, Thomas's brigade. Uh, so he's got his hands full. He's going to, we're going to have some shooting going on here. And also some shooting over here. I have Trimble's brigade uh, kind of swiping on the flank of this out-of-command brigade which is, who is this? This is uh, Prince, Prince's Brigade. All right, and he's out of command, uh, at least for this turn. He's out of command from his divisional commander. I've fixed that, so he's ba he'll be back in command in the next turn. Uh, so rebels are going to do some shooting here, and if these guys have rifles, have muskets, they all have muskets, so they're out of range. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure the Union, with their rifles, will do some uh, com uh, reaction fire as well over here and over there as well on the flank. There'll be some reaction fire. You can do that if you're shot at. You can uh, reaction face change, followed up by some reaction fire. Or if you don't need to reaction face change, you could just reaction fire. So if you're shot at, you can shoot back, basically, is what happens. So there's gonna, definitely going to be some shooting going on over here. Uh, as well as the left flank. But this is the situation. If you guys are interested in this, want to see more videos of my test game, it's not an actual scenario. I'll post some more updates. Any questions, leave me some feedback, and I'll be sure to get back to you and let you know what's going on. Great game. I'm loving this so far. It's first turn. We've got the Rebels moving forward, trying to push back uh, the Union right flank, as well as engage on the left. And the Union is kind of sitting back. They did move forward a little bit here and there. Uh and see what the rebels are going to do, kind of like a probing thing. So we'll see what happens, folks. Stay tuned.